Good morning. Welcome to your daily devotion for September 28th, Saturday. I'm glad that you are taking the time to join me here today, Pastor Mercer. And uh, today we, we will be in Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Uh, Sermon on the Mount. This is the beginning of his sermon on the uh, Jesus Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. Uh, Jesus talks about salt and light, Christ coming to fulfill the law, and uh, all of these things. Our psalm for today is uh, <clears throat> is a portion of Psalm 145, verses 17 through 21. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the O oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 145, beginning at verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Turn your attention to Matthew chapter 5. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass, pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus goes up on the mountain here, dear saints, and he begins to, begins to preach, gathers his disciples there, and begins to preach. And what does he begin with? He begins with these nine beatitudes. And when you look at this, this is you and I, um, those for those that recognize their spiritual poverty, uh, in our humility that we recognize that we are nothing without Christ and his forgiveness and his grace in our lives. And Jesus goes through these uh, beatitudes here, uh, these blessings uh, uh, that, that uh, we receive as a result of, of knowing uh, in humility, true humility and knowing where we are in our spiritual poverty. Jesus goes on. 
telling them that you are the salt of the earth. Uh, it is no longer, uh, and if, if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? We are the salt of the earth. That is, when you think in salt in terms of restoration, uh, keeping things from spoiling, uh, we, can, we also think of, of uh, salt as bringing the flavor out in things. Well, uh, we are, Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth. We, we are uh, uh, through that, that we spread uh, God's word in our works. We are, we are uh, others are able to see Christ in, in us. And he goes on here and he says that you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You don't hide a lamp under a basket, but on a stand, it gives light to all, all the same way. He says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. The good works of uh, preaching the good news, the gospel of spreading that, spreading that good news uh, so that others will come to saving faith uh, by the Holy Spirit. Christ did not come to abolish the law, he says here, but he came to fulfill it. Um, and Jesus has a pretty stern, a stern warning here. He says, anyone who re relaxes the least of this co these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And here's the kicker. He says this, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And what was their righteousness? There was no righteousness. Outer righteousness, they, they liked to show everyone how, put on a big show about how religious they are. So Jesus is telling us here that unless our righteousness exceeds that, you know, and what is our righteousness? Our righteousness is the righteousness that has been imputed on us by Jesus Christ. Uh, the, the, the righteousness of Jesus given to us as a gift. Um, and this righteousness, because it is the righteousness, righteousness of Christ, not our works, it's not something that you and I are doing so that we can earn points and get to heaven, but uh, the righteousness that you and I have is the righteousness of God. And thanks be to God that we are, don't have to try to justify ourselves in some way and about how good we are. Uh, no, dear saints, it's, 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 uh, it's the other way around. It's about what Christ has done for you and me and how he saved us by, by uh, dying on the cross and rising again for us uh, so that we could be fully justified in him and uh, have the gift of eternal life and the forgiveness of our sins. And he promises to be with us always uh, in baptism. Again, you've been connected to the cross and you, it is there that you belong uh, to Jesus. Well, to that we can say, thanks be to God today that he has made you his own and yet that you belong to him. And, uh, and it's not our, our salvation, uh, our, our faith is not, it's, it's not dependent upon ourselves, but rather in the one to, to, uh, who saved us, who died for us, and, and has made us his own dear children so that we can call on him as his own dear children. He is our father. Uh, he hears our prayers and he continues to be with us as he promises. In terms of, uh, uh, in, in terms of the a catechetical review here for today, uh, let's look at the third article of the creed, sanctification, which... We confess, I believe, in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we say, what does this mean? Well, I cannot believe by my own reason or strength, or, or believe, I believe that I cannot, excuse me, 
I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. See, this is how he's brought us to faith. It's not anything that we've done, but Jesus, as we saw in the gospel yesterday, Jesus came and he called the disciples and when he called them, what did they do? They dropped everything and they followed him. In the same way, we've been called uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, to saving faith through his word. This is how God gathers us and brings us uh, to faith, to saving faith. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's blessings on your day. Be in church tomorrow. That's where you go to receive all of God's good gifts that he has for you. So I look forward to seeing you here in church. And if you're listening to me elsewhere, you're not in the area, find a confessional Lutheran church to go to tomorrow morning to receive all of the good gifts God has for you there. I'll see you soon again in a couple weeks.